All right, students. So in this video, we are going to talk about this particular question, which is based on quadratic equations, and it has come up in KBPY 2016. So let's see this question and how we can solve this by a beautiful method, which is one of the solutions which you could try. Also, disclaimer: the question might have different solutions. We are presenting just one good solution. We wanted to teach this method, that's why we picked up this particular explanation. But your answer could also be correct we are not saying that this is the best or whatever the solution is it's just that we wanted to reach you that this is also a good solution which you can remember let's start the question okay so here the question is it says that suppose the quadratic polynomial px which is given like this so px is given to be equal to a quadratic expression right so px is equal to ax square that is the standard quadratic the coefficients a, b, c and d are given in, first of all, they are positive. So please read entire statement that's are given to you very, 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 very carefully. Right. And especially in an exam like KVPY where this question came in 2016, read the question statement very, very carefully. The KVPY are generally not asking you questions which are based on tough logics, but they ask you very simple logics, but they are asked in a tricky way. That's where the question statement is very important. Okay, so the first is Px is given to be that A, B and C are all positive, right? Second statement about them is that they are in AP and I hope I tell this, all of you class 11 students must have done AP, right? In fact, a class 10 student would also be able to do this. That means 2B is equal to A plus C or another relation can be B minus A is equal to C minus B is always constant. That is common difference. Got it? So up till now, this much is clear. Now you are said that if px has integer roots, so it, it it also has integer roots. So many of us will now start thinking of condition of integral roots, but let's just wait. What is asked of us is you need to find the value of alpha plus beta, right, into alpha beta. That is sum of sum of roots and product of roots, right? So let's just start working on how we can actually solve this question. So what is the sum of roots? That is equal to minus b by a. What is the product of roots? That will be c by a, right? So we can write both of them as minus b by a plus c by a, right? That is what is asked. And if you see this becomes c minus b by a. So if this is c minus b by a, so this actually, now the question starts to, starts to actually fall down. So it is actually can be said as b minus a by a, right? Because c minus b is equal to b minus a. We can use this expression here. And if you notice, this is a beautiful expression that you are getting b by a minus one, right? So now just notice you started with alpha plus beta plus alpha beta. And now you have landed again with a relation in terms of b by a. Now what is b by a? We know that minus b by a is we just use this alpha plus beta. Can we put this value back here? It will become minus of alpha plus beta minus one. And this now becomes equal to alpha plus beta plus alpha beta. Got it? So now if you solve both of them, this becomes two alpha plus two beta plus alpha beta plus one equal to zero. This is the net expression. The reason that I have taken this question is to explain you how to solve this further. This is actually the most important part. I have seen most of students struggle that what should be the next step after this? What should be the next step? Right? Otherwise, the question is solved. If you can just find the next step to this particular question, believe me, the question is already solved. So it's simple. Let's see. But it might be difficult for students who, have, who are in 10th or uh, who have just moved to class 11. Let's see. We can say 2 alpha plus alpha beta can be combined and let's just put 2 beta plus 1 for the time being here, right? Okay, so now if I try and solve this here, what happens? I take 2 common, right? 2, let's say, in fact, I will take 2 alpha common, right? So this will be what? Not in fact 2, in fact, sorry, we'll take alpha common out of these two, right? So if you take alpha common, what it will be? Beta plus two, right? You will be expecting, can I get something of similar sort here, right? That is something of beta plus two 
here also right we can get beta plus 2 provided what we would have done agar hum yahan par kar dete plus 4 plus 1 to hai hum yahan par 4 dono taraf add kar dete now notice now if this 2 beta plus 4 is taken you can take 2 common here and what has happened is actually it is equal to 3 because this one will go here and it will be left as 3. Now if you see this particular expression, your job is done. It becomes alpha plus 2 into beta plus 2 is equal to 3. Well done guys. So this is actually the main part of this particular question. If you are not able to understand, please pause the video. Watch the step again because these kind of steps are actually important which could help you in a tough question or an exam like kvpy very very important step so now i can directly say that now we have reached the step that alpha plus 2 into beta plus 2 is equal to 3 now we have not used one of these statements given in the question till date that is integer roots so now the integer root things come into the picture now integer root so alpha and beta are integers right this is what is meant if the roots are integers and alpha so if this is the integer then alpha plus 2 and beta plus 2 will also be integers no doubt about this so that means here you have product of integers product of integers equal to 3 now your target is to find when this can happen and Again, notice many would think, sir, ye agar 3 nahi hota to kya hota? Question hai, 3 kyun diya hai, uska bhi ek significance hai. Right? Why this 3 was actually coming out? Because 3 is a prime number. When 3 is a prime number, how many ways you can get the product 3? Let's see. 3 into 1 or minus 3 into, okay. Now, let's not just say minus right now. 3 into 1, right? You will then say, sir, 1 into 3. You will then say, minus 3 into minus 1 and you will say minus 1 into minus 3 got it if you notice these two cases are almost same why because this is alpha and beta will be just replacing their values right one solution will give you one value of alpha and the other solution will give you the same value for beta that's it but both of them are almost same cases then these two are almost same cases so let's just solve both the cases separately I'll say that alpha and I'm solving for, let's say, this particular case and this particular case. Let's see. Alpha plus 2 is equal to 3 and beta plus 2 is equal to 1. From here, I get the value of alpha as 1, beta as minus 1. Got it? Similarly, I can say alpha plus beta, oh sorry, not alpha plus beta, but alpha plus 2 to be equal to minus 3. Beta plus 2 is equal to minus 1. From here you get alpha is equal to minus 5 and beta you get equal to minus 3. Now you have two values here. So now you are stuck up uh, with which one of them is the correct answer. Whether the answer is uh, alpha is equal to 1, beta is equal to minus 1 or alpha is equal to minus 5 and beta is equal to minus 3. We have also been given this information interestingly. Okay, let me just show you that where this information was given to you. Now, have you noticed we have still not utilized one part of the question? Yes, absolutely. We have not still utilized. They are positive. Now, why this positive was given? Let's see that. You have A, B, C positive. That means C by A, that is product of root. This is alpha, beta. If C and A are positive, alpha and beta will also be positive. Now, multiply these two. The product of the roots is negative yes so you can actually reject this answer this is not the possible case the only possible case is this you see the product here is coming out to be both positive sum is also coming out to be negative here why sum should be negative minus b by a is equal to alpha plus beta right can you see b and a are positive so b by a will be positive but minus b by a will be negative which we are actually getting so we wanted to find what this value so alpha plus beta plus alpha beta just put the values so if you notice there would have been no change 
if you would have found the answer using this particular expression then only alpha would have come to be minus 3 beta would have come to be minus 5 but in totality the answer would have remained same and this will become minus 5 into minus 3 this reduces to 7 as the answer and this was the target of this particular question that you wanted to find 7 as the answer so i hope you have learned something new by using this question and again i repeat your solution could be a good solution could be even a better solution than this we thought that this sums up the entire thing that without even knowing too much of formula you can actually solve a kvpy problem and that is what happens with generally kvpy they will not ask you questions which require very high five formulas they will ask you questions which even a 10th grade student can solve but requires logic to be thought of got it guys god bless you all keep working hard i hope you can make positive use of this particular video. God bless.